Ladies and gentlemen, there is a very, very new disturbing trend that's happening with credit card holders, and this is a warning for everyone. Because what have we been seeing? The cost of living is getting unbearable. People are taking on more and more debt. They're using buy now, pay later for groceries. They're using credit cards for groceries. 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and most can't come up with $400 for an emergency bill. And you know what the worst of it is? We aren't even in a recession yet. And also, unemployment is at a 50-year low. So what do you think is going to happen when we do enter into an official recession, even if they try to change their definition again? And what do you think is going to happen once the unemployment rate or the real unemployment rate starts to go back up? That's right, everyone. We're about to see much more economic pain. And we have just got some new news, some new data to show us what's really happening. So everyone, what exactly is happening with credit card holders? What should we do to prepare right now? Let's not waste any time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Well, 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 everyone, look at this. Credit card delinquencies test multi-year high as job markets face material worsening, Capital One warns. So what happened is in 2020 and 2021, the US government, the big banks, they all said, look, guys, don't worry about paying your mortgage. Don't worry about paying your credit cards. Don't worry about paying your student loans. And there was record low delinquencies. Not because, you know, people were doing great. Well, yes, the stimulus checks did help. It was because the banks weren't, you know, defaulting anyone or sending anyone to bankruptcy. But now that things are heading back to normal, the banks are starting to register these delinquencies again. They're starting to put up defaults on people's credit ratings. And we're about to see what the real health of the borrower is. But like Capital One is warning here, the real pain won't start until we see more and more layoffs and the jobs market get much, much worse. Look at this. As Americans load up on debt in the face of high interest rate, credit card Capital One is cautioning that banks' profits will likely take a hit in the coming months as growing delinquencies start translating into expected losses, echoing warning signs that mounted before the Great Recession. So this is not good news for the banks, everyone. They've already had huge issues where customers taking their money out, putting into money market funds, or people worried that the banks are going to go under and taking the money out. And now the banks have had huge losses on commercial real estate while they're about to have big, big losses on these credit cards. Because look at this chart here, and this tells us there is a huge trend reversal. So this is the delinquency rate on credit card loans in all commercial banks. Uh, this is done by the Federal Reserve. We can see here a hit a high uh, in 2009 after the Great Recession. But it's been falling ever since. We did kind of get a little bit of a bump up uh, in 2019. So this was telling us, you know, the economy was not great in 2018, 2019. But then, of course, in 2021, um, when people didn't have to pay anything and in 2020, uh, it fell to lows. But look at this. There is now a new trend where it is skyrocketing up, and I think when things really hit the fan, this is going to rival the 2008 Great Recession. And with their latest earnings call, we did get more insights on what's really happening. In a post-earnings conference call Thursday evening, Capital One CEO Richard R. Fairbank pointed out the delinquency rate for customers at least 30 days late on payments rose 134 basis points from one year earlier to 3.66%, reaching the highest level since March 2019. Now remember, one person's spending is another person's income or another company's income. So if people start defaulting on their credit cards, they can't take on more and more debt. It means earnings for these companies are going to fall. We're going to see bank shares continue to fall. And we're also going to see the stock market take hit as well. The warning came after Capital One reported first quarter earnings of $887 million or $2.31 per share falling well short of the average analyst expectations, calling for income to be $3.90 per share. So that's absolutely massive run. This is almost a 40% drop in earnings per share. And this is going to start to happen at more and more banks. Much of the hit was due to a staggering increase in net charge-offs, which climbed to $1.7 billion in the quarter from $845 million one year earlier reflecting uncertainty in domestic credit and the commercial real estate market. And now the average credit card debt for all US uh, credit card holders is now $5,900, and that's up 13% from a year ago. And I wish I could tell you that the worst was over and it's going to get better from here. 
but we did get another report that shows us how much pain the US consumer is in. And this is really happening around the whole world. So look at this, US consumer borrowing climbs on surge in credit card balances. Now they're just gradually increasing, that will be fine, but they're now increasing at an alarming rate. So listen to this, total credit increased 26.5 billion, the most in four months. And this is after a gain in February of 15 billion. This was far beating expectations of what they thought would only be an increase of 17 billion. And look at this chart here. Revolving credit outstanding, which includes credit cards, jumped 17.6 billion, about three times the prime month's gain and the largest in a year. And like I was talking about earlier, a recent poll by Morning Consult for Bloomberg News showed over half of Americans don't have the financial resources to cover a surprise $400 expense. That combined with this report that 73% of millennials are living paycheck to paycheck. People are starting to get the picture here. I don't know how these mainstream analysts, these hedge funds, these people at the big banks, they keep on saying that the US consumer is strong. They have great balance sheet. That's not the truth at all. They're taking on records amount of debt when interest rates are rising and also when we're about to head in recession and they could be facing losing their job. This is an absolute recipe for disaster. And there's also something else that's about to happen next month that's going to be much more pain uh, for the US consumer. Remember that thing, uh, student loans? You know, you actually have to pay them back. Well, if they don't do an emergency extension again, it's due next month for students to have to start repaying their student loans. And that's going to be on average uh, another payment of $400 a month. And it's going to be many people that cannot afford this uh, extra payment. And so what I expect this is going to do is this is going to take a lot of disposable income out of the economy. And that means retail sales are going to fall. And like what's happening with credit card delinquencies, it's going to be less and less earnings uh, for these big corporations and stock prices are going to have to come back down to fair value. And another huge risk is a lot of people think that inflation has gone away and the Federal Reserve is going to slash interest rates to save the day. But we did just get another fake jobs report and according to them the unemployment rate actually fell and wages rose 0.5% for the month when you analyze that that 6% so that's showing us that inflation is not going away and by the government statistics the unemployment rate is still low so you better believe the Federal Reserve will keep lifting interest rates and there won't be a pause anytime soon so this means these interest rates on these credit cards are going to go even higher the average interest rate right now is around 20% but first Premier Bank they actually charge 36 percent this is completely ridiculous this is almost like a shark loan and if you have any debt with an interest rate above seven percent don't even think about investing in the markets until you pay that off because there's not going to be these crazy stock market returns of 15 20 percent are going ahead i think we're going to be facing stagflation and at least you can get a guaranteed return if you pay off debt you know you're guaranteed to save that seven percent also, you don't have to pay tax on debt you pay off, so that's a bonus as well. So everyone, I know we're thinking, well, okay, what does all this mean for you in simple terms? This means if you have credit card debt, do everything you can to pay it off now because there is going to be severe economic pain coming. Then start an emergency fund. Save for emergency so you don't have to become a statistic like one of these 50% uh, of Americans that don't have $400 for an emergency expense. And then once you've done that, then you can actually start investing for your future and protect yourself against the inflation that is going to be coming by diversifying into things like gold, silver, Bitcoin, etc. But everyone, what do you think about all of this? Let me know down below. Now, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers who are watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.